Hi, everybody. Welcome to the seventh in this series, an ongoing discussion of the DOT, ECE, and Snell Motorcycle Helmet Safety Standards. Uh, throughout this series, I've been telling you that the standards are all getting more and more alike. The tests are similar, although there are differences. Um, they're all good. I think that uh, if, if you compare them side by side, you'll see that there are benefits to each one. Uh, it's really important to me that you understand uh, when I say they're all good, you know, nothing drives me crazier than when I read a, a motorcycle magazine and they do a, a, like a motorcycle comparison, three different brands, and at the end, lo and behold, they like them all, they're all good, you know. Well, I'm not trying to sell ads to anybody or anything else. I, I don't have any particular reason to be loyal to one or the other. I'm telling you the way I see it. And uh, I'm trying to show you side-by-side -side comparisons wherever I can. So right here, uh, don't worry about how small this is. This is the chart that I've told you about in pretty much all of these videos where there's a, I've done a side-by-side -side comparison. And uh, I built this through the years. And uh, today it dawned on me that I could colorize it and give you a graphic representation of how these standards are uh, similar and where they're different. Um, I'm gonna blow it up here in just a moment. You, I'm not gonna expect you to read it on screen or anything. I am gonna try to run through it and, and talk about some of the uh, areas where they're alike and some of the differences. What I want you to know, First of all, yellow is DOT, green is ECE, and blue is Snell. White is just information. It might be the type of test, or it might be the weights and measures used within a test, that kind of thing. Red is where any given of these three sanctioning bodies or certification bodies don't do a specific test. By looking at it on this long strip, I've got it narrowed down so you can see you can tell that the ECE is by far the most stringent. They cover more of these tests than the other two by far. So let me blow it up for you here. And there we go. And let's take a look at some of these. Uh, the first test on the list is peripheral vision. And um, all three, interestingly enough, have uh, a requirement of 105 degrees from the center to the side. So here out. So a total of 210 degrees of uh, viewing area. That's all that DOT requires. Um, ECE and Snell both require a seven degree angle upward uh, visibility and ECE is 45 degrees down, uh, Snell is 30 degrees. The next one is the uh, acceleration, the G-force that we talked about earlier. And um, I mentioned that Snell has uh, on their two largest head forms because of the mass, they reduce it a little bit for 243, 264, and the other four are 275 Gs, which is the same 275 as ECE. So um, DOT has 400, but I talked in an earlier video that they have a dwell or duration requirement, uh, four milliseconds above 150 Gs and two milliseconds above 200. And because of that, I feel that that kind of balances them out. It also, uh, when you have a DOT and ECE approved or DOT and Snell, that helmet has to meet whatever the lowest uh, energy requirements are on that specific test. So uh, again, great, great blending of all worlds. Um, the duration test I just mentioned, DOT is the only one of the three that has a specific measured test. ECE uses the head impact, or excuse me, head injury criteria, and uh, they have a specific rating that it has to meet on that. And within that standard, there is duration. Duration is considered. And so in that sense, they do as well, where Snell does not on that particular question. Um, now, penetration test. DOT and ECE both require, sorry, DOT and Snell both require a penetration test where ECE does not. Uh, the reason for that is that in all of the records that ECE keeps, and they, they do a very good job uh, within the limitations of keeping records, that's essentially a statistically non-existent problem. It just doesn't happen, and so they don't require it. Now, balancing that out, um, if you're ever unfortunate enough to come off of a motorcycle, particularly at highway speeds or higher, you're a projectile. So for me, I like the idea that if I hit something sharp, that's at least been taken into consideration, and both Snell and DOT do that. They do it a little bit differently, but they both do it. Face shields, uh, the DOT does not have a specific uh, shield requirement. Snell does a penetration test. They actually have a pellet gun, and they, they measure the energy and the distance and all that. If the pellet goes through, 
uh, it fails. If it bounces off, it passes. And then EC has a penetration test, but they're the most thorough. They have a clarity test, and they also have tests that test about different types of light, like UV testing, that kind of thing. Very, very thorough in what's required. Uh, and they do batch testing on their shield. They're the only one of the three that do. Um, all three do a, a cold, a hot, and a wet test. And uh, slightly different variations on that, but they wanna be sure that if, if a shell's frozen, that it, if it gets hit, it doesn't uh, shatter. Or if it's too hot, does it melt or, or compress in a way that it shouldn't? Uh, and does it perform if it's soaking wet, if it's been through a rainstorm for a, a very long period of time? And so when it goes in the oven or, or the freezer, it has to stay in there for a set amount of time. And then when it comes out, there's a very small window in which they have to do their testing. And if they don't, they have to start completely over. And it's hours of freezing and such. So uh, the details are here in this sheet. All three of them require that particular type of testing. Uh, I mentioned before that the EC is the only one of the three that does a shear test, things that stick off the shell. Uh, they actually have a mechanical test to make sure that it meets certain uh, energy levels, that it'll peel off when it's supposed to. And they also have a very small rise. It's only two millimeters off the shell where DOT is five and Snell is seven. All three require breakaway. They all three do that, but only EC actually has mechanical tests that proves it one way or the other.